There are two ways to approach managing and setting background and foreground colors in automatic CSS. So we're gonna make this a two-part video. In this first lesson, we are going to look at the traditional approach to setting and managing background and foreground colors. And in part two, we are going to look at the new contextual approach. And then we'll talk about the pros and cons between the two. I would recommend taking the new contextual approach, but I wanna show you both approaches. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna share my screen. And we're gonna use ghost.org yet again. We've already set up the colors for this website and all of the shades. So we'll just keep going with this as the example. And we're gonna look now at backgrounds and foreground colors, starting with the default background color of the entire website. So when you look through a website, you wanna determine like, what are they using as like the default? Notice up here that this, this heading background color is white. The first section is white. White is used again here. It's a couple colors and then white is used again, a color and then white again, uh, another color, color, okay. And so, and that's the footer down there, which is very easy to set the color of. Generally speaking, this is a light, website. Yes, it has dark sections, but it is a light website by default. It is not fully dark, right? Okay. And the, the main light color that they happen to be using is pure white. So what we want to do is we want to start out by setting our default website background color. So I'm going to hop into the builder. I'm going to open automatic CSS, and I am going to go to backgrounds and text. Under backgrounds, you're going to see website. This is your website's default background color, which should be set to white by default. Okay. So that's actually already taken care of for us. All right. Fantastic. So I just want to show you where that is located in case you need to set it to anything else. In fact, let's just show you what would happen if I set it to anything else. So let's do base light. Instead, it's going to give me base light as the default background color for this website. So anytime I add a new section, that is the background color that we are going to see. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of that. It's going to go back to white. That is where you set it. Now, let's hop back over to Ghost. Let's take a look at background colors first. How are they deploying background colors? Well, right here is the white, okay? But they do have this pink. Now, is this a different section? What's going on here? No. It's the same section, and they're just using either a gradient or an inset box shadow. There's actually a lot of ways that you can achieve this. You can even use a pseudo element. I wouldn't recommend that, but it is a possibility. And, and they're doing that to make it look like this is overlapping stuff and it just adds a little bit of like texture and layering to the website. But that's essentially what we're gonna do is like a box shadow, okay? And then if we come down, we're just gonna see white again. And then we see this dark blue color. That's actually the base color being used for the background. So if I was doing this, I would add all my sections. Okay, I'm gonna go 10 sections. That's how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And we have this first section is the hero, which I am going to just give it more padding. So we're gonna make it a bigger section so that we can just denote that it is our hero section. And then I'm just gonna show you how I would set the that background color. Remember, it's not a back, it's it's a it's a gradient, okay? Or it's an inset box shadow or whatever it is. But we're gonna use a color variable to do this. So you can use utility classes for certain things and you use variables for other things, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close the panel for a second. I'm gonna go into border and box shadow, box shadow, and for the X axis, I'm gonna do zero. For the Y axis, minus 200, blur zero, spread zero, inset box shadow, and then you see a little color uh, icon. I am going to right click that icon, that swatch, and that is gonna bring up the automatic CSS contextual menu for choosing colors. And you're gonna see all of your available colors here, okay? And if I hover over them, you're gonna see what's happening because we're in um, that field for that inset box shadow, we're gonna see the color of that box shadow changing. And I can choose any color, any shade. And in fact, if you see these little down arrows under the swatches, that's indicating that there are transparencies available there as well. And so if I command, if I hold command when I hover this, I'm actually gonna get all of my transparency options as well. Now we actually don't need a transparency for this. We just need the primary color. So we're gonna go ahead and click primary. And now that is a sign. And if I go look at this on the front end, we are gonna see that I get exactly that effect that's going on in their hero section. Now I am going to scroll down below the hero and see that the next section is white. When the section 
is using the same color that is your default website background color, you don't have to do anything. There is no decision that needs to be made. You can simply move on with your life, put the content into that section, move on with your life. But the next section down does have a base color, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to set that. So I'm gonna skip this section because it's our default website background. I'm gonna go to this section right here and I'm gonna set this background color to base. Now, a lot of people will go into backgrounds because they're using the builder, right? And they will choose a color here. They might right click on this and get their colors and they might choose base. I would recommend that you not do this. What you're essentially doing, you are using the automatic CSS variable for the base color, okay? And so you're assigning the base color here, but you're assigning it at the ID level of this section, which uses specificity um, unnecessarily, okay? And you get the downside as well of the builder writing additional CSS to make that happen. Every section or element you do this to, the builder writes more CSS, writes more CSS. Your CSS file is growing when it doesn't have to because we've already written the CSS for changing the background color of this section, and we've assigned it to what is called a utility class. And a utility class is a class that just does one specific thing, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove that color, and I'm gonna come up to the classes area, and I'm going to right click. That's gonna give me this contextual menu. And I know I wanna change the background color of this section. So I'm gonna type BG. And that is gonna give me all these color swatches again. The difference here is when I select one, I'm gonna select BG base. Look up here what it's done. It's added a utility class called BG base, which is a utility class that does one thing and one thing only. It sets the background color of that thing to BG, to, to base, okay? That's what the BG stands for, background base. So it's setting the background to base. That's all that class does, okay? And notice how fast I was able to do that. Let's, let's do it again so you can see it in real time. So I click on the section, I right click, I type BG, I choose base, and it assigns the class BG base. And I move on with my life. Absolutely easy easy, simple, and fantastic. And you get the benefit of no additional CSS was written. It's using CSS that's already written. So now I come down to this section below, which needs to be base light. So remember, we're doing the traditional approach to this, which is just look and see what color it's asking for. And in this case, a shade, it's asking for base light here, and then assign the uh, utility class that matches that. Okay, so we'll go into the builder, Right click, BG, instead of base, I'm gonna do base light, and now that one is base light. Then I'm gonna go to the section below, which is again, BG base, and I'm gonna do that, and look how fast this is coming together. Let's get rid of our preview for a second. Then I need um, to skip the next section, and then I go base again, okay? So we're gonna skip that section, and we're gonna go base again. Let's go back to ghost, skip this section, because it's the website's default background color, base light again. Okay, so I'm gonna go skip that section, BG, and choose base light again. And then the last section we know is ultra dark. It is the darkest one. Base ultra dark is what we need. So I'm gonna right click, BG, and then base ultra dark gives me that one down there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save, and I am going to go to the front end to preview. And there's all of our section colors that Ghost has asked us for, all set up. Now what we need to talk about next is text color, okay? Very similar approach to text colors. First thing we wanna look at is, what is this website's default text color? You see it right here, you see it right here, <clears throat> you see it right here, okay? It is base ultra dark. I'll just tell you what it is. It's base ultra dark. You can inspect it and look and see what any given website is doing, but in this case, it is base ultra dark. So I'm gonna add a heading. And this is a hero section, so it's going to be uh, heading number one, okay? Uh, and let's put that down here so we're not dealing with this like overlapping pink and all, because there's not a, any other content in there to provide context for that. Okay, so what is the color of this? Well, let's go look and see what the default text color on this website is. I'm gonna open automatic CSS. And instead of going into, into backgrounds this time, I'm gonna go into text and we see something called default text color. Now, this might be a little confusing. Text dark, that's not a color, okay? That is a contextual utility because automatic CSS out of the box is set up for the contextual color approach that we're gonna, color, we're gonna cover in the next lesson. But I can quickly explain this to you. It's referencing text dark. Where is text dark defined? 
right below, right here, text dark, okay, is defined as black, which means that heading is black. But that's not what we want. Don't we want dark text on this website to be base ultra dark? So what I'm gonna do is change black to base ultra dark. And now by default, my headings, my text will all be base ultra dark by default, okay? Don't worry about any of the other contextual stuff right now. We will cover that in the next lesson. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Now what I've done effectively is I have changed just that one setting right there to where all of my headings, all of my text are base ultra dark by default as soon as I add them to a page, okay? So now when I add text, all right, that is base ultra dark by default. Make sure that this is a paragraph when you add it, fantastic. So our default text color is now set up and ready to go. One thing you're gonna run into though is when you're in a dark section and I add a heading. I'm gonna add the same heading and I'm gonna add the same text. Obviously, this is a big problem. I cannot read the text because it's dark on dark. So what I need to do is change the color of the heading and the text. Now, there's a couple of different, actually three different approaches that you might see people take. The first approach, which is the approach I do not recommend, we already talked about this with background classes, is to come into the builder panel and go to typography, right click and choose like a color and then click on this one and choose a color here, okay? Now, I. I I got to the effect that I wanted, but I did it a very inefficient way. I styled at the ID level again, which is not great. Um, and uh, I essentially wrote more CSS when I didn't need, like the builder wrote it for me, but uh, the, this is not a situation where we need more CSS. We already have CSS to do this job. So what I'm gonna do is clear this out clear this out, okay? And I'm gonna go back to using utility classes. This is the second approach, still not the approach I'd recommend, so stay with me, okay? I can right click the classes box and type in text, and I'm gonna get the swatches again. But when I add a color like base ultra light, it does it with a utility class, so I'm not writing additional CSS, I'm just using CSS that's already there and already available to me. Um, and it's a, very, it's a very quick approach, so I just right click text and I choose the text color that I want but I would still not recommend this because it's not as efficient as it could be. One concept in CSS is called inheritance, and we have to understand how inheritance can really help us out, They really do a lot of work for us, okay? If I had a lot, let me remove these classes. If I had a lot of elements in here, like I'm just gonna keep duplicating, I got a lot of them. Would I wanna go one by one by one by one, adding a class, another one, add a class, another one, add a class, another one, add a class? No, you don't wanna live that life. You don't wanna live that life. So I can use something called inheritance to my advantage. If I grab this section where I put BG base and I right click and, and do text and do base ultra light, look at what happens. It does all of my text and headings in that section all at once, okay? It's in, these elements are inheriting the text color instruction from the parent. That's really, really, really efficient. Which means if you know what you're doing, right? You can, we have this section as our starting point. I'm, I'm doing the base colored background. I can go BG, add base, and then immediately say text, ultra light, and everything's done. Look how fast I was able to do that. Now, does this mean that I can't select one of these and override the parent's color instruction? No, I absolutely can. Look, I can right click text and I can do primary. And now that one, is primary because I gave that one a new instruction that it's actually not inheriting. I gave it a, a direct instruction, which is why this works, okay? Direct instructions will always beat out inherited instructions in CSS. So you have ultimate flexibility matched with ultimate efficiency. This is how I would recommend managing it in the traditional approach. Now, let's talk about variables, color variables, and when you could use them, when it would be a good idea to use them. If you are using BIM, okay? So for example, we're gonna take this section XL off of here, and we're gonna say that this is our hero section. And then we have the inner of our hero section, okay? And let's just get rid of the that pink for right now, because it's just, it's just, you know, it's a little confusing. Let's get rid of that, okay? So we're making a hero section now, and I have a heading and I have 
text in here, okay? And let's say we want our hero section to be our primary color. Well, I wouldn't wanna come up here and do BG and choose primary. Like that gets the job done, but I'm mixing utility classes with custom classes, which is not the best scenario. I mean, it's not bad, okay? It, you really have to understand, I guess, what you're doing, okay? And, and what you're doing across a website. If you're gonna have a hero where you the, the hero background color changes, this might be a, a good thing to do. But typically what you wanna do is you wanna give the hero the background color that it's gonna need by default and that you're gonna use most of the time. And so to do that, you would assign that background color to the hero class by activating the hero class, going to background and setting primary here. Now, whenever you make something a hero, it's gonna get that color, right? By default, which is fantastic. I just cleared that out. Uh, I don't wanna clear that out. I wanna get rid of the class on that section, okay? And so now I can assign other things here, like my hero section is going to have the extra padding in it. So I can do XXL and XXL. Now look how big my hero section is. And any other section that I go to and say, this is a hero, is gonna get the color and the padding and it's gonna look like my hero section. When you're using custom classes, that's when you probably want to use the color variables to set background color. And then again with your text color. So I can go in here with my typography and I can say that we're gonna do primary ultra dark or primary ultra light. Whatever passes color contrast checks better is probably what you should use. But now I'm using variables instead of classes. Why? Because I'm using custom classes instead of utility classes. We will do a whole video on custom classes versus utility classes later on in this course. But right now I'm just showing you a little bit of when you would use the variables versus when you would use utility classes. And then as you saw, it's never really a great idea to use the variables at the ID level. It would be a rare, rare, rare circumstance where you would want to do that. In most cases, you want to use a utility class for doing that. So this is the traditional way. Let me go back to camera here. This is the traditional way to deploy text colors and background colors with automatic CSS in web design. In the next lesson, we're gonna talk about a new approach, an approach that gives you a lot more flexibility, a lot more ability to re-theme a website, a lot more efficiency because you actually don't have to worry about the colors as you approach the, the design and layout and development of the website. You only have to care about darks and lights, okay? And it's a really, really, really fantastic way to approach it. Plus there's a feature called automatic color relationships that we are going to explore. And I truly believe that once you wrap your head around this new approach, you will fall in love with it and you will reap all of the benefits of it. And then you will preach how this should be the approach going forwards. I will see you in the next lesson.